Right. Hello. Um, I'm waiting near a venue where I've produced an event. Well, I mean, the moment I'm producing it, but actually, that's the thought. By the time you see this, uh, the event will be done, so I can just tell you. It's a Writers Guild event I've made called A Night Out with Sandy Toxfig. And the thing is, I really can't do any work at the venue yet, but I have things I've got to get done before we start. So, cue an iPad. But sitting here in the car, my usual keyboard was kind of in the way. So I'm going to be writing on the glass of the iPad. Um, real keyboards, okay, are always better. Apple's magic keyboards are unquestionably the best, also unquestionably the most expensive, but you can type on the glass, and I often do. But when I do, there are five things about the iPad, is it five, that especially help me and that I want to be sure you know about as well. I'm really not sure about five suddenly because I've just thought of two more straight away. We may have to come back to this topic, but, but let's do five. Let's do five big ones right now. Hello, I'm William Gallagher and this is 58 Keys, which as ever, as always, is for writers like you and me who use and who write on, well, Macs and iPhones and today, particularly iPads. Uh, do subscribe or support 58 Keys on Patreon because, uh, well, there is so much to talk about, and in fact, more than we can cover today. More, I should have thought this through more, hadn't I? But yeah, okay, for now, uh, you're writing on the glass because you're in a hurry, really. So let's get on with this, William. Concentrate. I don't know. First, here's my iPad. Here is some writing on it. Here's where I need to write uh, a digit for some reason. Rather than pressing that number button, the one that has the punctuation, full stop, question mark, and then one, two, three, just flick down. Yeah, I, th I think you should be flick up if you ask me, because it feels like you're sending a character, sending the digit up onto the screen, but it isn't. It's flick down instead. Flick down on any of those keys in the top row to get numbers. Flick down on any key to get whatever digit or symbol is also on that key in grey. Have an at symbol, since it's you. If you do want to use that number key, the one with the punctuation in one, two, three, well, it's a free country. You go right ahead and tap it. And as you, I'm sure you've seen that, if you do that, you can now choose any or all numbers or symbols you want. But you could also do this as on a middle ground. Press and hold on that number key and then swipe over to the one you want. When you let go, that symbol, that digit, whatever is typed into your document, but the keyboard has sprung back to regular QWERTY letters, or is that in France? Once I got that kind of flicking thing down though, that's all I ever do with this, except for those times when I need a symbol that isn't shown on the main keyboard. Um, second, I'm sure you've seen this, I know you've seen this, or you've just even accidentally stumbled into it, but if you press and hold on the space bar for just a moment, the entire iPad keyboard turns into a trackpad and you can slide your finger around that to move your cursor around your document and precisely position it where you want. Very useful. Great. Like it. In fact, that's something, I think I use that quite a lot, really, but I only just learned that you can use this same kind of thing to select text as well. You start the same way, press and hold on the space bar, when it turns into a trackpad, well then you do, you move your finger around and so your cursor until it's at the point where you want to start the selection of text, where you want to begin selecting something. Don't let go. While your finger is still pressing down, still pressing and holding, tap any other finger, any other finger, anywhere on the trackpad. Seriously, by the way, any finger, anywhere, doesn't matter. What's happened is that that tap has now turned on selection and you can drag your first finger in any direction to select text. I like this one because this one looks like a magic trick, especially because the way you have to do it, you can't actually see it working. You can only see the effect, the before and after, if you like it. It's undo on an iPad. You're in an app. Okay, Not all apps, by the way. I don't know why this would be, but some apps... It doesn't work in drafts. Five that I use a lot doesn't allow it. But you're in most apps. You write something, it's total rubbish. Get rid of that before anybody sees it. Remove it from your sight. Place three fingers on the glass and swipe from right to left. I had to think about that then for a second. 
right to left. You, think, you see how your own hand covers up your writing and when you let go, that writing is gone, it's undone. You can redo it, you can get it back when you change your mind, because we do that with a three finger swipe the other way. Uh, I am gonna bring this iPad with me into the venue. It's got all the notes for it. It's got the budget, uh, every contact detail of every person involved. Actually, every detail of every detail, really. But standing up, rushing around, there are likely to be times when the regular iPad keyboard, the full-size, full-width one, is going to be less than convenient. But you can change that. Uh, you used to be able to do more. You could split the keyboard so that, like, one half was on one side, one was on the other, uh, but that's only on older iPads. It no longer works with newer ones, and I believe no longer works with the newer iPad OSs, whereas this always works. Uh, make sure that the regular keyboard is showing. Tap on some text anywhere to make, make the keyboard appear if it isn't there, and then press and hold on this keyboard button at the bottom left. Swipe over to where it suddenly says floating, let go, and now you've got an iPhone-sized screen, an iPhone-sized keyboard, rather, just ready for you to do one finger tap typing through whatever you need to do. And to get back to a full-size keyboard, by the way, you take two fingers, place them over the iPhone-like keyboard, and just pinch out like that. On a Mac, if you want to work on two documents once while well, you go for it. On an iPad, well, you can still go for it, but it is not as obvious how you actually do this. So here's how you do it. Open the first document as normal, then drag up from the very bottom of the iPad screen to show the dock. Um, the app that you want these two documents to be in, it has to be in the dock, but by default, unless you've fiddled about, recent apps are always in the dock there. So whatever you've opened should be there as well. And in this case, I have pages open on the screen, but show the dock. There I have the pages icon in the dock. Press and hold on that pages icon right there in the dock and then drag upwards. As it changes, position it to the left or right and then let go and now you have two documents open in one app. Um, I should say, sorry, to then close either document, uh, you can tap on the three dots at the top of whichever one it is you want and then choose close, uh, which actually is what I'm going to have to do. Now I'm going to have to close up and get on. Thank you for your company. I'm always a bit nervous before an event, um, but this has been a fun distraction. Thank you. Talking with you, I like it. Even though actually I realise it meant I didn't get a single piece of the work done that I wanted. Well, thanks a bunch. Thank you. That's it for this edition of 58 Keys. Thank you very much for watching and for being with me for a while. Now take care of yourself. Produce events, write more, and I'll see you soon.